uh, 50 Cent is coming out with a docu-series about Diddy. There's no toilet paper in all of Wilmington. She's just going on and on about how there's no toilet paper in Wilmington. Have I gotten toilet paper? You don't pay into taxes and insurance and then you're not going to be on your roof because of a storm. That's stupid. You obviously give zero about people if you're okay with them dying because you flew in. Yeah, you want a photo op. You want I'm to not okay hands. with that. People are begging for help and begging for support and begging for money. And you say that you don't have any and then in the same breath, find money for another country. It's disgusting. Welcome back to the He's Wrong, She's Right podcast. I'm Andrew. This is Nona. And I don't know what we're talking about. <laughs> okay. You're not going to say like, subscribe, follow, you're, do all the things. You're doing it right now, so you're doing a good job. <sighs> links down below or links in next to you or links hover on the thing or links everywhere. Whatever platform you're on, you know where to find the links. We don't need to tell you. Okay. I guess let's jump right in. Okay. Um, okay. Visit nonaphelps.com for insurance. <laughs> Uh, sure. Visit nonaphelps.com for insurance He's in wrong. North Carolina, South Carolina, Florida. Well, they probably can't right now in Florida because they're about to get hit smacked in the face with a Oh, hurricane. yeah. There's moratoriums in effect for everywhere yeah. currently. So you can still visit nonaphelps.com. I just can't write you a new policy. Yeah. Bookmark it for this weekend. <laughs> yeah. After, after the storms have passed. Yep. And uh, good luck to those writing now. My buddy, uh, he went to... Mishawaka High School, not my high school. Okay. Um, he's a uh, Air Force. I think he's still just a recruiter. Maybe I don't know. But they live in Tampa, and they're evacuating. And he posted pictures um, of all the the storm damage and debris from Helene mm-hmm. that's still just out along the road, hasn't been picked up yet. So there's pre stage projectiles for this storm. In addition to the fact that it looks like it's going to probably hit as a Category 4, potentially Category 5, the one thing that they potentially have, I don't want to say in their favor, but is favorable is the storm is moving fast. So it's just, it's not going to sit on top of them like a lot of storms do. It'll cut right through, hopefully. Hopefully. So um, there's a lot of mandatory evacuations those uh those dweeb brothers from Twitter decided that they're staying, so worst of luck to you guys. I have no idea who you're talking about. The, Anyways. The midgets. The, the crack, Cranstein crack, brothers. Crack, crack and oh my whatever. god. Yeah. The Bieber lovers. Uh, okay. Anyways. <laughs> okay. So obviously Diddy is still a hot topic. Okay. He has been, you know, taken into custody and all that. And then did you hear that uh, 50 Cent is coming out with a docuseries about Diddy? I feel like he is... He, he has been no, on the anti-Diddy train for years. No, no, no. That's, so, okay, sure, that's fine. But I feel like he is becoming Snoop Dogg version two. Like... Okay, explain. Gangster who was shot a bunch of times. I believe he was in prison and became a rapper. I know he and like, M are, Eminem are like BFF, and I think he might even be... I thought they hated each other now. I'm, no, I think he might even be like Eminem's daughter's godfather or something like say, that. I thought you were going to say baby dad. No, no, no. I, do, I don't know if that's a legitimate thing, but I, I know that she just recently got married and he was obviously at the wedding and was very emotional about it. And I, I feel like he might even be godfather, but I could be wrong do on that. Do you think he'll be um, he'll become Eminem that is uh, less weird as a grandpa? No, Eminem's always going to be Eminem. <laughs> You don't think you don't think he'll stop whatever he did that year at the Michigan game when I had him like Oh, we've already talked about that. I we speculated maybe he was on something right. uh when he supposedly is sober. But anyways. Anyways, we're digressing. Anyways. We're not talking about Eminem. We're talking about Diddy. Okay. Um, so now, because Diddy is in everybody's vocabulary, um, people are sensationalizing him almost for headlines and saying, they did. 
so-and-so is the new Diddy. So like, I would say it's even more prevalent than Epstein. Um, so like Garth Brooks is currently being sued. And instead of saying Trisha Yearwood's husband or Trisha Yearwood devastated over husband, uh, potentially having sexual misconduct towards, I believe as a makeup artist, not, not no, she was no part of this and he was really no part of it. It was, he is the new ditty of country music. Fun. It, it just, it, it's a pretty huge leap. I'm not saying what happened Did, is raw, is, is not except like it has nothing to do with Diddy though. People have been posting, um, like still images. I haven't seen any actual gifts or videos or whatever, but still images at least of videos that Diddy was either in or cameoed and by videos, I mean movies. Um, and well, there was that one leak that came out, which is pretty damning. Um, we're not going to talk, we're not going to talk about that because that will get no, us I'm just trying to follow. What are you talking about? Diddy. So he was in the movie, get him to the Greek, right? The Jonah Hill and the, Oh yeah. Um, I saw that actually this morning. So some, somebody said that didn't age well or something yeah. like that, which I saved it. I, oh my I gosh. It okay. You, so another thing about Diddy. So it came out when they said there was like 700 and something dildos found and confiscated. It also came out that there were over a thousand bottles of baby oil. And the lawyer said, the lawyer said, oh, it's because he bought it in bulk at Costco. Costco stepped in and said, we don't even sell this. Somebody, uh, Greg, the the account on Twitter. Okay. He posted, he was like, I wonder if uh, that was the reason why there was the shortage at the beginning of the pandemic was because of him buying it up. There was a baby oil shortage. I, I don't know for a fact if there was because I wasn't buying baby oil. Yeah, I, I, okay. Everything else, I mean, toilet paper, diapers, why not baby oil, I guess? If that's your thing and you're hmm. worried that it's going to be sold out and maybe you are <laughs> the one, you, you're causing the problem for everyone else by being the one, the only one worried about it. Yeah, I mean, obviously that just recently happened with the port a uh, strike that occurred for what two and a half days yeah but they're they're they paused it for political reasons of course but um so check this out i just googled this for noodles okay uh what is puff daddy's first song okay. and the song's title is can't nobody hold me down because he's covered in baby oil and he's gonna slip and slide on out of there well that and because he was the one holding other people down oh <laughs> Quite literally, like <laughs> yeah. wrapping them in what it was like bed sheets and stuff like that. Sp spent six weeks at the number one on the Billboard Hot 100. Okay. So I guess since we just talked about the port, um, I'll just jump right to that. So, <laughs> um, October 1st, it obviously had been talked about for like a month leading up to at least um, saying on October 1st, they were going to strike. They were going to strike. They were going to strike. October 1st came. I only go into the office one day a week. I go into off the office on Wednesdays. And the very first thing my coworker said to me was, Oh my God, Nona, did you buy toilet paper? This is now October 2nd at this point, Wednesday, the day after the, the strike. And I was like, um, the last time I went to Costco, maybe, or the time before, I don't know, we're good. Why do you ask? Do you need me to get you some? She's like, Nona, the shelves are wiped out. There's no toilet paper in all of Wilmington. Hold on, what just happened? Give us one second. Peter's freaking out here. <laughs> All right. Maybe we're back. Having some technical difficulties this morning. Luckily, nothing happened when we had our guest this morning. Um, and it looks like we should be good. Just our view is weird. So hopefully it doesn't come out weird for you guys. If you do, just uh, put it on the background. Don't look we at We currently us. look like Oompa Loompas on our screen. So... If that's what we look like for the rest of the so that fixes it. recording, then so be it. Oh, well. 
So right. now I'm doing a little Oompa Loompa dance in my head. Okay, your, <laughs> your co-worker slash Okay, employee. so anyway, so I go into the office one day a week on Wednesday. So this is the day after the port shut down, whatever. So <laughs> she's like freaking out. She's young. She's impressionable. She's like 24, 25. And she's just going on and on and on about how there's no toilet paper in Wilmington. Have I gotten toilet paper? Am I going to take my lunch break today and go get toilet paper? You know, she's she's genuinely worried. It's not... Okay. <laughs> anyway, so I text him. I text him and, of course, my phone locks on me from us pausing. I text him and I'm like, so apparently everyone's out buying TP like Corona 2.0 and shelves are wiped out again? Question mark. And he's like, people are saying that, but the real humans I know are saying Costco is just its normal pact. The port unions are on strike. And I said, yeah, I heard that was coming, but I assume they will come to an agreement shortly. He said, probably not. They are demanding zero automa automation. Even Gates have to have a worker and 75% raise. And I did the shruggy emoji. And he said, the union president said he wants to cripple the U.S. and doesn't care. Democrats and Republicans both hate him. He can't win. Literally the next day it stops. No, it didn't. So, yeah. It didn't stop. I guess that it was going to be over quickly. It's not over. It's 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 pretty much resolved. No, it's not. It's unresolved. One hundred percent unresolved. Everybody hates him because he apparently has like a bazillion yachts. He's a total douchebag. Okay, but it's not resolved. It's they they pushed basically it basically resolved. No, it's not. They pushed it till after the election. They're letting the election ride. They know the Democrats know that they will lose without a doubt, in a landslide if it continues into next month. Okay, but also the point being, toilet paper does not come from overseas. It is made right here in America, everybody. You do not Most need... Of Most of it, yeah. Kimberly Clark is in Pennsylvania. Procter & Gamble is that, in... That's, that doesn't necessarily mean that's where they manufacture it. You are right for the most part, but the graphic that went around was wrong. I did check it. That was just people literally <laughs> posting, here's where their headquarters are. But yes, for the most part. But in addition to that, some products, even here in the States, it is cheaper. If you have manufacturing near a port, it's cheaper for you to put it in the box and ship it to the next port than it is to put it on a truck and take it to that same region. So there are some products that will get shipped by train. There's some products that will get shipped by truck. And some products that stay here in the U.S. that still get put on the boat. So it still could potentially have had an impact, but it was entirely overblown to the extent that it could have an impact. <laughs> Rar. That's how it is. Anyways. 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 So you had, they had like face whatever. I do, but when I have a microphone in front of my face, Interesting. it obviously is not picking up my face because I have a giant thing in my face. Just like back in COVID times when you had to wear a mask. Mm. Wouldn't pick it up because... I was wearing a mask, but okay. only was, only was. So um, apparently SNL just did a huge anniversary uh, 50th and they came out with a spirit. They're only 50. They came out with a spirit Halloween um, fake commercial or spoof commercial. Sorry and claimed, quote, unquote, help is on the way for dead-end towns and struggling communities. The fake commercial claimed that Spirit Halloween provided vulnerable communities with the things that they needed most. But those things being wigs that give you a rash, single-use fog machines, and costumes of famous characters tweaked just enough to avoid a lawsuit. Spirit Halloween was not very happy about this. So they came out with their own adult-sized costume called SNL 50, the anniversary season, which is said to include dated references, unknown cast members, and shrinking ratings. And it took the internet by storm 
because the comments read something like, didn't even know SNL was still around. Didn't even know SNL still existed. That's got to be rough. <laughs> it was funny, There's in my a, opinion. It's an article. What is happening here? Loudwire website is weird and kind of sucks. Anyways, I thought I was hoping to be able to pull it up, but yeah, it just says they hilariously troll. Why spare Halloween social media? Barb at SNL has gone viral. Why spirit Halloween social media? Barb at SNL has gone viral. Spirit Halloween slams irrelevant on Saturday night live, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Um, and they, I can't remember who the guest was, but it, they kept, because uh, the Michigan game was on NBC. Mm -hmm. So every commercial break, they kept over and 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 over again. I don't even remember the last time I watched SNL. I think it was before I had kids. I watched it a couple times shortly after I got out of the army, mm -hmm. but it was always because there was a guest that was going to be on it that I thought would be funny or mm -hmm. cool or something like that. But I haven't seen any of that lately. I mean, there probably are people that I'd be interested in seeing on there, but right. for the most part, I, I, I've thought about it. If I was a guest on something like that, I would play the game all the way up until it was actually live. And then I would just be an asshole the whole time. And I would just ruin the production. That sounds on par for your behavior. <laughs> on freaking par. Because they, they're... It's just cringy. It's, just, it's not even like fun satire. They're just like The Onion who used to be really funny. It used to actually be satirical. And now it's just, they have, I can kind of see that they have, uh, leaned so far in one direction that they can't even see the humor in anything. If you poke fun at them, they actually will personally attack you. They don't see the humor in it anymore. They, but they think it's funny to make personal attacks at the, it's just, it's not even, satirical or parody anymore it's just a bunch of washed up has been people and i think they were actually acquired by a bigger like news outlet and that's partly why because of course you get decision makers come in and say well we gave you money and now we don't want you doing it that way you need to do it our way that's why when you have all these big companies that go public and then all of a sudden they're not the company that you thought you loved anymore it's because now the money is like no nope, Nope, you can't do that. Nope. Nope, you can't you can't be offensive anymore. Nope. You have to pretend to cater to everyone and then all you do is alienate everyone because the people that you already alienated Sounds like you're talking about USAA. No. That's like exactly how you describe their commercials. No. What you, you just said. But you pretend is not to be inclusive but actually alienate everybody. It's how you've described all talking, of USA I commercials. Was publicly traded companies that I don't believe USA is publicly traded. Right, I know, but just what you described is how you've always described USA commercials. No, I was talking about a very specific company, but not naming the company because I don't have the views that people that don't like that company have. Okay. That's like literally every healthy food product, like all the grain free, gluten free chips that are now owned by like PepsiCo. They're no longer healthy or like um, the collagen powder that used to be really good and clean that's now owned by Big Pharma. It's not anymore. Like it's just, yeah. Okay. Anyways, we're digressing here. <laughs> I'm not because I don't even know what we're talking about. Okay. So um, this post went viral on X Twitter, whatever. My dad thought White Claws were just right, just like LaCroix and has been drinking one every morning on his drive to work. <laughs> that makes me think of a video I saw about two years ago, and it was a woman filming her very Asian. And by very Asian, I mean, like, English was not her first language. I don't know exactly which, but she was, mom was drinking a White Claw 
And, oh, this is very good. This is very good. Talking to daughter who was filming her and daughter. Oh, yeah. What is it? What is it? Oh, it's just spicy water. It's spicy water or something like that. And she was like, it's alcohol. She's like, I don't drink alcohol. It, I don't. And she, she got very offended that her daughter was insinuating she was drinking alcohol when it obviously is clearly on the label. But how do you how do you pick up something like that at the store without being near the alcohol? Well, I guess if it's an, on an end cap, you could misunderstand, like say at, at Harris Teeter, for example, you're walking around and it's just very much on an end cap all by itself. So you don't actually go down the beer and wine aisle. It's just on the end cap. And I could see how somebody who has never consumed any alcohol in their entire life uh, picks it up thinking it's just spicy water <laughs> i wonder what they think about the uh liquid death then yeah they, they probably think it's synonymous no i'm saying i wonder if they think liquid death is alcohol so probably they don't buy it. probably that's funny yeah so anyways um the comments were were pretty funny on that uh co-workers wondering why he's been so nice lately um I hope he's been walking into the office with a can in hand. Somebody would, somebody would say something unless you're one of those people that uh, you throw your trash like in the bed of your truck and maybe he was like carrying it in. But outside of that, at some point somebody would, unless you throw it away outside before you get inside. Right. But somebody, or you leave it in you. your car. That's almost, that's worse though, because then you know, alcohol open can in your car. I can see the confusion crying emoji. He knows what he's doing. He just hates his job. Says one comment. I wonder where, what state was this? I don't know. What, what's the like headline? It's not a headline. It was a tweet. Oh, I said that he must have had an upset stomach and he wanted an Alka seltzer. He's the same guy that thinks Tylenol are bitch mints. <laughs> okay. What is <laughs> I've never heard that before. A few years ago, I was working long shifts and getting <laughs> off late at night. Sorry, my Siri thinks that I was talking to it. And I got up, so I got a Yeti that fits Red Bull cans on my way to work. I was stuck in traffic and I was like, damn, this Red Bull is hitting this morning. Kind of got a spice to it. Two thirds of the way done. I unscrewed it and pulled the can out. Black cherry white claw chugged the last third and chucked it in back seat. Not my proudest moment, but it happened, says one commenter. Also, so apparently it's happened to other people. I was hoping that if I typed in a couple of keywords that this would come up, but everything that has come up has been worse. Okay. <laughs> Bus driver caught drinking on the yes, job. Yes. 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 Um, <laughs> I drank Celsius thinking it was a white claw. No, that, that was, um, Long that Island happened in like last year. It says, yeah, I was going to say about a year and a half ago, a year ago tomorrow. Oh, Okay. According to the data. Yeah, geography. and the bus driver swore up and down, did not know that there was alcohol in it. That says, uh, is undergoing chemotherapy and didn't know White Claw was alcoholic. I guess if you were really, truly going through chemo and had cancer, then you probably wouldn't be drinking knowingly unless you were doing it and just lying Unless about you it. were an alcoholic to begin with. Yeah. Well, this is what the person looks like mm -hmm. or looked like a year ago. Oh, it's a woman? Yes. Uh, caught drinking, bringing <laughs> students home last week. Will not face charges because police believe her story that she grabbed a hard seltzer without realizing it was alcoholic. The six-year-old driver, Amal Hannah, told News 12 Long Island that she is teetotal. And she was like, I, if I remember correctly, caught because a student like videoed her or something sent it to a parent, something like that. She grabbed the white claw from a fridge she shares with a roommate. 
uh, thinking she was drinking a regular fruit-flavored seltzer while driving the kids home from Smithtown High School in West on Wednesday. Uh, it was a mistake. It was a mistake, the newly fired driver said. Yeah. And I did see in search results the first thing that came up. So I didn't realize that this was going to be like, I guess, kind of a good story because it was on accident. Mm -hmm. Um, but the first thing that came up was Reddit thread about it, and it said thousands raised for bus driver was fired after she blah blah blah. I didn't realize that all these stories were going together basically, mm -hmm. so I wonder how much money they raised. Usually, uh, like go f not GoFundMe. What's the what's the one where you beg for money? That's GoFundMe. I thought there was another one. There's so many. No, there. I've always been wary of GoFundMe's. I donated to my very first GoFundMe this past week to um Because you don't you don't actually have to be the person to set up like Yeah, that's I, GoFundMe. I could set one up and say that the money's going towards you and then I could just take all the money and you never know about it. Yeah, that's GoFundMe. Uh, and apparently it was built into my donation a nineteen percent tip to go back to GoFundMe, which I was kind of Hour about. I was, to, steep. I was trying to. I was trying to help a, save my cousin's farm that completely got flooded in Western North Carolina. Was it a sliding scale by chance? Like I don't if know. you do a dollar, it's nineteen. I donated a hundred, a hundred dollars, and it was built in nineteen percent tip. And I didn't know until I was already checked out that I could have lowered the tip to. It doesn't go back to my cousin. It goes to GoFundMe. Yeah. That was kind of gross. Drinking. I'm trying to find the, I wonder how much money they actually raise. Because sometimes, like, when stuff like that goes viral and makes it on Reddit, they mm -hmm. end up raising, like, a lot of money. So I'm just, uh, go on me page. The go find me page for the bus driver. It's from the Daily Caller news site. Do, do, do. It raised 17,000 four days after she was fired. Um, the GoFundMe is this for it? Help Miss Hannah. So it raised almost sixty thousand dollars of the fifty thousand dollar goal. So they probably made more than her salary for the entire bus. year. Yeah. yeah. So good job. I wonder what happened to her after that. Do you think she got her job back? No idea. Yeah. I'm more curious if she's out of chemo. Um, I'm sure that because this happened, there's probably news coverage about it. So, let's see here. What is her name? Why can't I find just one place with just her name? Candace Farrell? Oh, um, Amal Hannah. Okay. I'm assuming that's how you pronounce her name. If it's not how you pronounce her name, blame somebody, not me. Okay. Uh, there's nothing that jumps out. Oh, there's apparently a doctor with her same name. <laughs> a medical doctor in Pompano Beach, Florida. Uh, chemo free. So she has another GoFundMe for her cancer fight. Fire Long Island school bus teacher who was, this is just, the, so no, there's no updated coverage. All of this is still stuff just from last year, October 6th, October 9th, October 12th. Yeah. Well, so if any of you guys know her, please let us know if she has successfully made it through chemo because I'm curious. Or do you think that that story was somebody adapting this story for clicks? Um... Because that happens a lot. I mean, I guess anything's possible if you're thirsty enough, pun intended. It, I, it happens all, I mean, it happens with scams and stuff too, which people stop sharing the missing three-year-old, the missing dog. All you have to do, the, the same amount of clicks that you have to do to click to share is how many clicks to verify. So save yourself having to delete it because of the embarrassment and just click the person's profile. You don't have to click to read the whole story, whatever, just click. If it says it's a beauty page with three followers, the kid's probably not actually missing. Just so you know. 
on that note, and since we already touched on it a little bit, let's talk about Hurricane Helene that devastated Western North Carolina all the way down through Florida. Mm -hmm. Talk about it. Well, a lot of people are still missing, and depending on who you believe and what reports, it's anywhere from 1,200 people missing to... 13,000. Yeah, I think that number is way overblown, just simply based on the census. Like, that would be, like, the entire population was missing. So, but, I mean, depending on how you count, right, if your starting number is, we know this many people exist here, and until they're all accounted for, sure. But the the way that, like, the police or the government looks at it, right, is how many people have been reported missing, not how many people live there and how many have checked in, more or less. You trying to pull up the number? No, I'm. Mean, you just said that would be the entire population. I There's 93,000 people that live in Asheville alone. So what are you talking about? 13,000 makes up the entire population. I'm saying that the way that people are reporting it is like, oh, the entire county is missing until... It's Bob multiple counties. In. It's multiple okay, you're not, cities. You're not listening to what I had to say, so let's move on. Okay. So, there are a lot of scams, once again, GoFundMes and things like that that people are setting up to take advantage of it. There, um, uh, GoFundMe, I think, was doing, they weren't, they weren't actually putting a pause on anything, but I read somewhere that they were looking at them more carefully as people were creating them. Donate to Cajun Navy Relief. I know that that is an authentic person who is dedicated to helping everybody in the area. He and his team came here for Florence. The kids and I assisted in his after Florence cleanup. Please, if you need one person to donate to Cajun Navy Relief, that is the actual full website. And And he's out there with his mules currently going over mountains. Most reputable nonprofits will have a uh, guide star and there's a couple other ones ratings on them. And there are transparency ratings within those ratings uh, what happens is they have to turn over their financials every year, and which includes their tax returns, receipts, everything, how this, how their money is spent. And they have to give a breakdown that says, out of every dollar we raise, X amount goes to our cause, X amount goes to, you know, uh, running the operation, keeping the website up, paying members and, and employees and travel expenses and things like that. So typically you can look at the financials of these organizations and determine which ones, if, if you wanted to nitpick and get down into it and you really wanted to make sure that it was going to the right place and that your dollar, out of your dollar, 75 cents or 80 cents or whatever was going to the cause or to the victims one way or the other, that's the best place to start looking would be to go to GuideStar. It's, they have, uh, there's like four rating tiers, I believe. There's platinum, gold, silver, bronze, and then nothing. So, and you can find, depending, each level is set based on how much the organization is willing to give to GuideStar. So if the organization is willing to turn over everything, fill uh, every block, and reports everything on time, they're probably platinum, um, or at least gold. Uh, gold is hard to get in your first year because you have to have filed a tax return first to get it. If you haven't, then you just can't get it. You sell, that's what Veteran Wiki had the first year was silver. Um, so yeah, look at that stuff. Obviously, look at reviews. Look at social media pages. Look at how long uh, some of them have existed. You know, if they just popped up last month, if you don't know them, probably don't use them. But if they've existed for a long time and they have a good reputation, then that reputation is probably not going downhill for one storm. There might be people that are mad that, you know, they only brought 10 gallons of water and they asked for 20. Stuff like that happens. People, you know, I have friends 
uh, my friend Summer down in uh, Charlotte, or not Charlotte, um, oh my gosh, down in South Carolina, and I can't think of the name of the town. Um, they've been without power for almost two weeks, and Duke just keeps giving them a new updated, oh, um, by Friday. It wasn't on Friday. No, they're saying Tuesday, tomorrow for us um, in the past for you guys watching this. So it just keeps changing. The problem with all of the inland areas that are where this storm affected is you don't have as much storm preparation because they don't typically get hit with the brunt of the storm like this. They don't, they'll get the remnants typically. The storm still moves inland and still dumps a lot of rain on them, but they don't get the actual brunt of the storm like we typically do here. So they don't have as many generators, you know, the roads, the infrastructure isn't really meant and set up for it. How many houses do you think are have like garage doors that are wind rated all the way out in the mountains? I don't know, but it flooded like that a hundred years ago. So anything's possible. They right. knew that this was in a realm of possibility, even like, for example, an X flood zone, that means possibility right. of a hundred year. But when you, as soon as you see a storm coming up from the Gulf or up the panhandle and moving inland and the eye is tracking over land the majority of the time, by the time it gets to the mountains. Right, the today, expectation yeah. is that it's going to dissipate. Yeah. So, yes, but you always have to prepare for the worst. Right. But the flooding is the biggest issue that occurred here. And the stories that are coming out are so sad. Mm -hmm. Watching children, parents. And the morons that are like, oh, Republicans don't want socialism until they're standing on the roof. That's not how any of that works. You don't pay into taxes and insurance and then, you know, you're not going to be on your roof because of a storm. That's stupid. The people that were making it political like that are just ass. Especially when you don't even know who the person is. They might be on the same political spectrum as you. And now you're talking about them. All you're doing is alienating people from what you want to see happen politically. Stupid. Stop. I personally have been very proud of being a North Carolina resident because of watching the community come together and neighbors helping neighbors. Everybody from here on the coast to up to Raleigh, Greensboro, whatever, coming together truckloads after truckloads to drive to Asheville, Boone, wherever, wherever is the, lo the least... Uh, resistance with the road closures that they can get to to start dispersing trucks of water, There's paper a, towels, toilet paper that have all been bought up. I can't think of his name now off the top of my head, but he was, uh, he might still race NASCAR. I don't know, but he, I know he used to. Um, he's got a house or a big compound out in that area, and he's one of the ones that was coordinating a lot of the helicopter flights because he owns helicopters. Mm -hmm. And that's where uh, Cletus McFarlane, when he picked up his, that's where he stopped and where they stayed mm -hmm. when they were helping out as well. Um, so seeing that, see, I guess it's kind of nice that that's the trend. Like that's the, the cool new thing for people to do, people with money that is, uh, is to become helicopter pilots and buy private helicopters and they're all flying around doing stuff. So there's a a big spike in private and hobbyist pilots who got in on it and are still out there working on it. And then on top of that, despite being threatened with yeah. arrest and on top of that with their large social media presence, the, all the technology that everybody has now, can you think of another storm where you could find all of this aerial footage and photography from all over the place. Like there's no, there's no, well, maybe the destruction is this bad and the news crew flew over one time. Now it's, no, they can pinpoint, here's the entire route that we flew over and here's our video footage and here's the area most affected and here's where we think AIDS. I remember a lot of video footage regarding Katrina, but 
that's also a different situation. Um, as to hurricanes that have occurred here, not really. It's not because to this, it's not to this volume, we are not isolated but, the way that they are. And so helicopters are having to come in. It is not an option. But people didn't have smartphones then. People didn't have social media then. People didn't have the ability to disseminate this on their own. You were watching the news to see that. Mm -hmm. And you were only watching what they wanted to put on the news. Whereas across social media, unless it's dead bodies. Right. But I'm just saying, which speaking of, that's everywhere right now. Yeah. Um, the point being, the helicopters are coming into play because they have to. Right. And that's never there. I can't think of another instance where they have had to come in because that was the only way. Right here. You can boat. If you're, if you're stranded because your house is now an Island, somebody's going to kayak to you. Right. Um, that's not an option there. Right. Yeah. I mean, it might be, but it'd be a lot of work. And right, right. And, and, but well, now that the water has receded, everything is just mud. Right. So, no, they, kayaking is not an option. So, I asked Google here. This today is uh, October 7th when we're recording this. Uh, I said, How many people are missing from Hurricane Helene? And I specifically asked missing, missing, not dead. AP one day ago says 227. Uh, dead doesn't give a number of missing. I know I had seen estimates and I thought they were from official channels. Um, yeah, they're not. So 227 confirmed deaths is already more than the death toll of a hundred years ago from the flood. Obviously the population size was significantly smaller a hundred years ago, but just take that into account that mm -hmm. that was the total a hundred years ago. We still have thousands that are missing and not confirmed dead. Yeah, I'm trying to see. And then there are possibly people who both are missing and possibly still alive, but have not been found and are now dehydrating. It's such a sad situation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're they're not giving any sort of numbers or estimates on there. I know I saw FEMA had put up their own like uh, disinformation FAQ page, something along those lines for if you if somebody posted this or said this, there are people that if somebody posted that FEMA was turning them away, ignore them because we're not turning anybody away like that. Yeah, that's part of it. But it's one of those things where it's a partial truth. If your house is destroyed, the FEMA um I can't remember what the it, it's it's an initialism or acronym. It's like the immediate assistance something. Um, the seven hundred fifty dollars. It's only for. Oh yeah! Food, if you water. don't have homeowners insurance and you're already on government assistance, then you qualify for seven hundred fifty dollars. Put on your card that they, they don't have power. So where the f are they going to use their card? Can you tell this has been an issue that I have already? This is so disgusting to me. So, um, mixed bag here. Uh, Elon was able to get Starlink turned on for everybody in that corridor uh, free of charge. So anybody, right, but then did you see the, the follow-up on that? That he, the shipment was stopped? No, 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 no. Okay, yeah, so that's a different thing. So we're not going down that path because there were still some that got in. There's still blah, 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 whatever. It does, doesn't matter. So if you already had Starlink, okay, <laughs> your bill is $0 as well. Yeah, it's and not, then also like AT&T, Verizon, whatever other carriers also like unlocked the but, internet. So a couple of years ago, and this is, it's actually, it started rolling out this year. A couple of years ago, T-Mobile announced a partnership with Starlink mm -hmm. to offer direct to satellite communications, actual like, like talking like Nextel, not how you and I have emergency where we can text 911. They actually have voice and everything, voice data over satellite through Starlink. 
And that just finally rolled out yesterday after Elon had been begging. And so I went on the tweet and I was like, Hey, um, I know it's not like you guys' fault, but maybe next time just do it. Don't wait. Just Mm -hmm. don't, don't ask the government. Just do it. Mm -hmm. If you're going to get a fine, you know how, you know, the outcry of people that are going to come out and support and want to buy, they're going to want to switch to T-Mobile or they're going to want to get Starlink internet because they're like, dude, the government, right? Elon stepped in and flipped it on even when they didn't have permission to do so. I, for those who have survived this, I cannot wait to hear their stories because I'm sure there's going to be some amazing stories of neighbors helping neighbors. And like, I've seen videos of shopping carts being used across rivers with pushing supplies to people that are isolated on the other side. And you know, what really made me mad. So obviously any politician or anybody that's going somewhere and, and showing face or whatever. Oh, Biden going and the whole air, everything getting shut down for 12 hours during the day and preventing people from getting rescued for 12 hours just so that he could go and Right, right. Oh, but God, so, I get so, so angry about this. So here's the thing that really bothers me about it, right? you They obviously, their PR team is obviously picking an area that's less impacted because they have no. to... No, no, stop. Listen, listen. Hear the entire story of what I'm going to say before you interrupt. Mm-hmm. They're picking a specific spot to land and to hold their photo session Mm -hmm. because it can't be dangerous for the president. Right. Right. And then they're bringing in people both with them and people on the ground who are wearing clean clothes, haven't really been doing any labor. They're staging photos in front of people's houses who are collapsed and all this. Meanwhile, it's way worse and they're making it look like, Oh, we're, we're doing our best. We're busting our ass. And these people here are working really hard. There's there's a group of people who are going to be like, oh, he should have visited or he shouldn't have visited, blah, blah, blah. It doesn't matter. You go to an area where it doesn't impact, to your point, rescue and recovery efforts, and that's where you start. You're on the outskirts where you're not You hindering. obviously give zero f- about people if you're okay with them dying because you flew in. Yeah, you want a photo op. You want I'm not okay hands. with that. Yeah. So the whole thing is ridiculous, out of control. Um, I agree with the decision that the president and people from the state and states that were affected need to show their face in these areas, but not in the middle of the effort. Right. Not where it impacts rescue missions. Yeah. And if you do need to go into those areas, you do so covertly on the ground or in boat, not in aircraft. You stage over here and you get ferried in somehow, some way, some shape or form. Right. Because the, the president Whatever. the president does need to get eyes on the scene. He needs to understand the gravity of the situation. But again, yeah. Your life is not more important than somebody else's life. Right. So but they, they need to, the, the president needs to have eyes on because the president needs to be able to turn around and go back to Congress and say, they need money. I understand. Now. Which yeah. perfect segue. How much money was allocated? Oh, I looked at like the per state thing and I don't remember. Yeah. FEMA, FEMA running out of money, the whole mismanagement thing. So somebody, um, actually my cousin, got mad at me about the the migrant thing. Okay. And so found the clip of... Them uh, saying that they had enough money to get through hurricane season. And here we are having, what, three more coming our way in the next week and a half? And Yay, good luck to us. and, And everybody else. Yeah. And them saying not just that they had enough money, but the there was actual, a surplus the, or actual something? the actual authorization to use the money for migrants. And that was a specific bullet Disgusting. point. That was a specific bullet point back in March was, or not March, 
June, I believe. Um, the specific bullet point was we're fine. We're well funded. And then to turn around a couple months later and say, we're running out of money right before both the end of the fiscal year and going into an election cycle. So they were trying to play both sides. Like we're well prepared. We have enough money. Let us do whatever we want with the money. This makes me so mad. Yeah. Here's $750. Good luck. Yep. And then, oh, it gets even better. On, I believe it was on Friday, mm-hmm. because of Israel's invasion into Lebanon. Okay. The U.S. Oh was, my God, I saw this. Yes, yeah, say it. Uh, and specifically, uh, Harris had you know, tweeted it out, and uh, the uh, secretary, um, one of the, sec- I can't remember who it was, but they tweeted out that they had just, they found money for a, a relief package for the impacted civilians and those in danger in Lebanon. Did you see the response on Twitter? Yeah. Oh, (laughs) I didn't realize that that's how you spell the state of North Carolina. Yeah. Oh, this makes me so mad. I'm like so worked up. It's completely, it's completely tone deaf. People are begging for help and begging for support and begging for money. And you say that you don't have any. And then in the same breath, find money for another country it's disgusting. Yeah. I, I, I think this um, election cycle is going to go really bad for them. So not to say that what comes next will be any better. Except but now that you've said the word election like four times already, we're going to get demonetized on this video because they're going to say that we're promoting political blah de blah Oh yeah, election, whatever. Yeah, yeah, whatever we've gotten hit with multiple times. For like on our meme episode, which didn't have anything to do with anything other than funny. Yep. Okay. So right. Right. I will take a deep breath and I will um close out our episode with something humorous to leave us with something a little bit lighter. <sighs> Okay. <sighs> okay. So Amtrak came out with a new Chicago down to Miami temporary line starting November 10th. Um, there was a Facebook page called bullet trains, USA.com, which I think was kind of weird having .com in the Facebook page, but um, they, they, a lot of times they'll do stuff like that because there's, there's something else similar to no, it? Or? There's no awareness for uh, the website yet. And the brand doesn't isn't really a thing yet. Okay. So you make the page your, what, your web domain. Mm-hmm. So when people see the Facebook page, they think, let's go to the website okay. without clicking a link. Okay. So anyways, they posted about it, got thousands and thousands of likes, comments, shares, all of that. A lot of them were very confused, though. So Bullet Train USA was the one who posted, Amtrak customers can now purchase tickets on the Floridian, a new temporary route offering a direct round trip between Chicago and Miami, et cetera, et cetera, lots of stops. So first comment, the title using the descriptive term bullet train is misleading. It should be reserved for when such rail service is available. Bulletrainusa.com responded, read slower in all caps. If you click on the actual profile, it says bulletrainusa.com. We want all major U.S. cities to have more local passenger rail and be connected with high-speed rail. That's it. Um, So simply because it was in their title, people, lots of people, assumed that Amtrak now had a bullet train. Um. And then this comment, for a lower price, I can arrive in three hours. <laughs> Dave Sewell, it's not about you, Bubba, says Bullet Train USA. Millions of others choose to ride a train and they have their own reasons. You think we give a f- about your driving skills? <laughs> and then this comment, Amtrak? Fast? What? 
this commenter, obsolete. Bullet Train USA responded, your cars and airplanes evolve just like trains, Bubba. Do you, <laughs> what is with the Bubba? Do you want to know why trains in the U.S. are slow? Okay, why? The train unions. They control the track and they refuse. Uh, there was something, it was something to do with the maintenance and the uh, tax incentives of the number of lines that they have throughout the country. And they refused to add additional lines that were dedicated to high-speed rail because the government would take away their subsidies. So the reason we don't have high-speed rail in the U.S. is, is because, because of, of the, the rail, government. Rail unions. Okay. All right. This commenter, if they are on time, I would like to plan but they often delay. It's hard for me to plan anything around it. I have more than a 90% Amtrak delay record from writing about 40 different times, says this commenter. Bullet Train USA responded, you act like fight, flight delays don't ever happen. So that's, okay, two things here. Back to my point about there not being enough rail. When two trains are on the same single track, they're communicating way ahead of time. Mm -hmm. And so there's diversion points where the, the track will split into multiple lanes and then converge back down to a single lane. So they'll have to radio ahead. Say you are ahead of schedule on Amtrak, right? Mm -hmm. But there's a freight train coming the other direction. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to actually stop and wait longer now because you they, they have to clear the whole line before you can get back onto your path. So it's not really Amtrak's fault as much as it is an antiquated whatever system. Mm -hmm. It's the rail. Have you ever traveled on a train in the U.S.? Yeah, um, several times as a kid to Chicago. Chicago, yeah, yeah I could so, see that. Um, Chicago, one, New York City, I think are the only cities that I've been on trains in North Car or North America. So there's there's a service. It's actually right at South Bend's airport. So you can ride the South Shore is what it's called. Mm -hmm. You can ride the South Shore to um, all like the main event centers in Chicago. Mm -hmm. So you can get on at the airport, have somebody drop you off, Uber, whatever, mm -hmm. ride right to McCormick Place or ride, ride right to Wrigleyville or whatever, mm -hmm. and, and then hop right back on. You don't have right. to worry about drinking and driving. You don't have to worry about any of that other stuff. Right. And when there's a big event in Chicago, the lines run later into the evening mm -hmm. on the return lines. That is so you can stay out there at your big event, whatever Cubs game, Bulls game, Bears game. Oh, and DC. Sorry, I forgot yeah. about DC. Um, but the the target demographic for a lot of rail travel in the U.S. has typically been retirees people that don't really have anywhere to go but want to explore the country and don't want to have the burden of driving. So I know people, I, I've worked for some people and uh, done projects for people where, you know, they've set aside an entire month to go like out to the Grand Canyon on train. So it's it's cool for that. If you don't have anywhere to be, you're not doing it like for business. It's just a, I want to experience the train and I'll stop a hundred times and get off at every city and walk There was around. an episode of six, Sex in the City like either the fifth or sixth season and she doesn't like to fly. So she had a book tour in California and her agent said, you got to get there. So she rode the train with her friend and it took three days from New York city to California. And by that third day she was miserable and finally decided to fly back. And I would totally be in the same boat. Like no thanks, what, never doing that again. One of the YouTubers that I watch frequently, um, that's one of the things that he's been showing off for a lot of these different train services that have been adding a lot of amenities lately. Mm -hmm. So they'll have like luxury cars where, you know, not just your bunk cars, mm -hmm. but also like there would be a car dedicated to like a, a fancy restaurant. Right. And there'll be like a fancy bar car. Yeah. And they're all this other stuff. They have these ones through the mountains and stuff. They have like these glass domes. So you have a panoramic view in every direction. So there is some cool stuff. I mean, I don't want to sit on a train for, this is 47 hours from Chicago to Florida. Yeah, uh, I'm not I'm not <laughs> down for more than like, I could, I could be okay with like a four hour train. That's probably my limit. After that, I would rather be in a car or on a plane. 
I have no problem doing like a eight, 12 hour car trip, but more than four hours on a train to me, even though I could get up and move around, it's just that, that constant like, so I, think, I don't like that. I think that varies depending on the quality of the train that you're riding. I think Amtrak isn't about that life. Not <laughs> about that life. I think they're, they're a little bit more, I don't want to say comfortable, but they're maybe less uncomfortable. Um, just from what I've seen, they're pretty smooth. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. But of course, it also depends on the rail you're driving off. It's a, it's a really unmaintained stretch. There's nothing that you well, can do about ask it. ask my parents. That's what they just took from Raleigh to Philadelphia was Amtrak to go stay with my sister. And then they're going to track from Philadelphia to New York City and then from New York City back down to Raleigh. Yeah, there's actually, there's a stop uh, right next to the rail yard in Elkhart because that's one of their, that's, I think their main hub in the Midwest is the Elkhart rail yard. It's not Chicago. Chicago is the end stop. Is that what we drove past? Yeah. But they have, that was uh, massive. they have two, maybe, I think it's two, maybe it's more um, decommissioned rail cars that are like off the track, off to the side and it's a diner. Mm. It's pretty cool. It looks looks that, like like regular people can go to. Yeah, yeah. It looks like an old school like fifties diner because it's like that steel. We should have gone to everywhere. it. Well, the we, kids would have been totally down. We, we couldn't because everything was shut down. We the blizzard. drove in. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, we were looking for a place to go to breakfast. I don't know why that wasn't on our list, but it might have been. That would have been the place to go. Yeah. So, hopefully, this video turned out well. Did you have more to close out? No, it's okay. All right. Um, this episode will be called Nona's Rage. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, you guys saw me get really angry. That's that's me angry. Yeah. Um, now you guys are all going to laugh <laughs> at me. By the time you guys see this, depending on this what... This will be our, Thursday's episode. Well, yeah, depending. No, this will be Thursday's episode. If the this, episode is good. If the like this didn't mess oh, up. Man. Um, if I have to rework it and try and make it work, it'll be first thing next week. But... Um, by the time you guys are seeing this, you know, check on your friends in Florida. It looks like it's just going to cut right across Florida and go back out to sea. Um, but right about that same time, most of Western Europe is going to be getting hit by either a category one or a tropical storm. Kurt. So my brother moved from here, Wilmington to the Netherlands a couple of years ago. So he took the hurricane with him. Yeah. The track, <laughs> the eye track, of course, uh, we're still, what, three days out. The eye track uh, right now is projected to hit on the coast of France and s maintain tropical storm intensity all the way into Germany. Which they are so not prepared for. Yeah. There is, that's just out of the realm of possibility in their world. It's, it's, what's the weather out there right now? Um, Probably like 55s to 65s. That sucks. Yeah, 62 and rain right now. But that's weather. I mean, any weather is terrible to get a big storm like that, but to it's not gonna have... It's going to be cold rain. To not have power on a roof after the storm is going to be worse. Cold rain. Yeah. So, yeah, it looks like yeah, on here it's going to be 59 when it hits them and 46 at night. I did not even look at that. I just was going off of memory from how it was living there in October. The following days after the storm passes through, there would be 56, 43, 56, 42. Yeah, I could see that massive drop after. Yep. Well, it's like a four or five degree drop. But anyways, thank you for watching. Go support some of these. Uh, Cajun Navy. Sure. No, no, we'll put a link. Andrew will put a link. No, no, put a link. Andrew does all the, the linking. All right. Bye. Goodbye.